So what makes a good rocket stove? Let's first look at that wonderful thing, the heat triangle. In order to make fire, we need three things. Air, fuel, and heat. What a rocket stove does really well is it combines these three things. Now, this is a rocket stove. I am part way through making a small batch this morning. These are the rocket stoves I, smell, I sell, so sorry if this seems like a bit of a spruik, because it is. <laughs> I can only ever make limited numbers because of um, time limitations, and I don't have... Um, I'm not made of... But anyway, so, yeah, that's what it looks like before it's painted. The, in my mind, that's the prettiest part right there, and no one ever sees it. <laughs> uh, what do you do? I remove all the, um, the the blue paint and the mill scale so that the um, pot belly stove, the pot belly black paint sticks really well. <clears throat> so why does a rocket stove do that really well? Well, what you have in a rocket stove, I'm going to draw this for you. Most traditional rocket stoves are either an L or a J. Now, I think we all know what convection is, or hot air rising, because that's really important to understand. So this is our rocket stove. This is that rocket stove in X-ray view. Now, our fuel comes in here, and it's on fire. Now, our hot air is rising up. Now, if hot air is rising up, something needs to come and take its place. We're creating a vacuum. Now the air is going to come in in the point of least resistance, which is down the bottom, which is why you need to leave the, give yourself a generous amount of room in the bottom half of your rocket stove. You don't want to stifle the stove's flow um, of air. So we have our fuel, which I haven't drawn very well, which for most cases uh, are sticks, twigs and things. Fire, hot air is going up, cold air, Fresh air, I should say, is coming in the bottom because that's the point. That is the path of least resistance for the air. It's going to come in. It's going to come up through the fire, creating a hotter, a more clean burn. It's basically like you know when you your fire is going out and you gently blow on the coals or whatever, and it gets it going again. That's what this is. That's the effect this is creating, but all the time. Now, heat. Um, a really good rocket stove has an insulated um, burn, has an insulated chimney. Chimney, chim, 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 chimmery, chim, chim, chiru. A really good rocket stove is insulated. That means that every last square inch of heat, square inch of heat, does that even work? All the heat is. Uh, Instead of being wasted by, by going by soaking out through radiating out through the outside, it's kept inside where the fuel is, preheating your wood a bit better, keeping that a bit hotter, and making it more efficient. It also uh, the heat stored in this in the riser uh, also helps combust all the last bits of smoke and stuff that happens that wouldn't normally happen in a standard sort of outdoor fire. So what have I covered? We've covered the airflow, we've covered heat, we've covered, we haven't covered the fuel. Now, I tried to explain what a rocket stove was to, to, a, um, to a guy and he just laughed at me and said, how can increasing the airflow um, and increasing the heat mean that your wood lasts longer? He thought I was crazy and he really discouraged me from even going and making these. It's just like you're nuts, it's not going to work, that sounds ridiculous. Okay, so I'm going to cover that here right now. Basically, in a rocket stove, you can only burn this much wood, 75 mil in this case with this stove, 75 mil of your wood at one time. It doesn't want to go back there. Uh, it, it just burns this much. And this is why your wood lasts a heck of a long time. Unlike a standard fire, which I'm going to draw down here, where that's all your wood, and it's all just going up in flames because the heat's getting to all of it. It's, it's All the wood is getting exposed to air and heat, it's all going to go up. Where here, um, it's not. This is where your heat is. The hot air rising means, and that airflow means that this isn't allowed to get that hot. In fact, when it burns back, it can only sort of go so far and then it starts to go out. So 
So that's why a rocket stove um, does as good a job as it does. We're controlling the airflow or we're, we're concentrating the airflow, we're concentrating the heat and we're controlling the amount of fuel that's burnt at any one time. You can only burn about 75 mil worth. It also means that you need to push, keep on top of your, um, your fuel and keep pushing it in. You sort of can't, it's not the sort of stove that you can light and walk away from. You've got to stay with it. You've just got to mind it, you know. It's not going to, um, it, it gets a lot easier once the stove gets hot and there's, there's sort of the whole thing gets hot and you start creating a bit more wood gas then and it's just it just gets better and better as the stove gets hotter. Now, something that really kills rocket stoves, and particularly, um, not kills, but um, is something that you need to be mindful of, is ash control. Because it does build up, and after a while, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to exaggerate this. After a while, the ash builds up, and at that point, we're stopping the airflow. The stove doesn't go out at this point, but it does reduce, it, it loses its effectiveness. It, it just, um, it's kind of like a simmer, if you like, that, that setting on your stove, which is, isn't bad because normally by the time it builds up to this point, you've finished all your cooking, or for me that's the case, and you're just wanting a simmer anyway because it's just food sitting on top and you, you, know, you don't want it to get burnt to a crisp. Um, you can just poke a stick in there and hook it around, move it around and get that airflow happening again if you're not finished. So my little stove has a few things that other stoves don't have. And one is this notch out here. This increases this chamber ever so slightly, not too much, because at the end of the day, if you go back too far, well, you're gonna, it's, you know, you don't wanna cut the corner too much. You want the air to go all the way through. Uh, it also has this slit down the center of this band plate. Um, this gives you a little bit of grace in that it, when you forget to push your sticks through, the fire isn't going to go out. Not that it goes out all that often, but when it's the startup stages and if you, if you get distracted, like I do when I'm preparing veggies or whatever, um, it's not the end of the world. This will help. This slit helps keep it going. It also allows me to bend this plate here at home on my homemade brake press, which is nothing flash at all. So there you go. That's why a rocket stove is um, so efficient at what it does. Guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. I really appreciate the, the comments you guys have been sending through, um, supporting what I'm trying to do here. I, I do push the boundaries and the limits a bit. Um, and I, I know to uh, the purist out there, uh, a rocket stove has to be a certain thing. And that's great, you know, that, that is what a rocket stove definition is. And I do stretch, um, I, do, uh, it, I do push the boundaries a bit. Uh, I'm just trying to find ways of doing rocket uh, on a smaller scale um, that is portable, that is useful. But yeah, I have to keep these small so that they can be shipped um, at a reasonable cost, you know, like... I know that a lot of the bigger rocket stoves that people sell, uh, the cost of shipping sometimes is as much as the stove is, and I can't, I just don't feel right about that. So that's that's my goal here is to make a stove that's small, um, that that can actually be shipped around, it. and that means when you get it too, it's you're not like, you know, it's not taking up a huge amount of space for you as well around the home. If you're anything like me, I'm not. I'm sort of struggling with space and needing to throw some things out. A little bit of a hoarder. But I use the stuff I keep. So, yeah. What else was I trying to say? I can't remember. Thanks, guys, for watching. Um, stay tuned. I've got some... I've had a few brilliant finds in the scrap heap, and I'm going to be making some, um, some different stoves soon. Um, maybe a more traditional-style rocket stove for the purist out there. See you guys. Hi. Hi. Oh, good. 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 Good.